we should not relent. We cannot stop the fight. As long as we keep on sending this message and acting along these ways, I'm sure that foreign investments and even Bulgarian investments in the economy of the country will mushroom. Hello, the Recursive community. My name is Elena, an innovation reporter at the Recursive. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Daniel Lorer, Minister of Innovation and Growth. He is a seasoned entrepreneur and an investor who is now building a career in politics. Minister Lorer, how is the current crisis, meaning the rising inflation and the ongoing war in Ukraine, affecting the investment climate in Bulgaria? They are extremely challenging, not only for Bulgaria, but for the entire continent and the entire world. The challenge is compounded by the complex political situation. We have a setup of operating a government made of four parties. And these four parties are quite different in their economic and political overview of how Bulgaria should operate. We have people on the left and on the right of the spectrum. That creates actually a very vivid discussion within government what we should do. The good story and the good conclusion after these three months is that the government is united in its basic tenet. What we are after is to make Bulgaria a rule of law place. That's where all the parties in the coalition are in one opinion. Now, making Bulgaria a rule of law country is, or rather turns out, to be a long-term task. It's not something we can accomplish overnight. There's a lot of legacy. There are a lot of uh, difficulties in the judicial system, both the way the prosecution works, the anti-corruption committee that does not find any corruption, uh, the actual parliamentary government uh, exchange, which tends to consume a lot of time but produces relatively little legislative result, the Supreme Court nominations, the Supreme Judges Committee that nominates all these people. We've come to realize that it will take time, but the first steps were actually successful during these three months. We succeeded in removing or making remove the anti-corruption czar. We had a number of government regulators with dubious practices whose management has been replaced. We're about to cancel the specialized courts and the specialized prosecution, which has been an instrument of actually avoiding the rule of law for the past years. But these are first preliminary steps. These are steps for cleaning up. These are not steps for building up. The building up of this reform will take some time and we are digging in for a long fight. The reason why I'm talking about it in such detail is that the investment climate in Bulgaria to a large extent is influenced by the perception of investors for the rule of law in this country. This government and particularly my ministry has taken as its task not only to change the way law is administered here, but to make it known to the entire world, and specifically the investors community, that we mean change. So far, the signs are quite positive, both in terms of the diplomatic presence, foreign countries looking at the way Bulgaria acts, are advising investors from their countries, whether or not we mean business. So far, the feedback has been extremely positive. We have seen quite an influx of investment interest in the several areas of the economy that Bulgaria wants to emphasize, whether it's traditionally ICT, whether it's energy and green transition. Uh, and lately, we're starting to see even some agri-tech opportunities. We should not relent. We cannot stop the fight. As long as we keep on sending this message and acting along these ways, I'm sure that foreign investments and even Bulgarian investments in the economy of the country will mushroom.
Last summer, the caretaker government announced a plan for the production of electric cars near Lovich, and now your government announced a plan for the production of electric batteries near Starazagora. Can you share what is the current status of those projects? And um, is there any new investor interest in building products from Bulgaria? Well, to throw a few projects around, uh, the electric car project that we have inaugurated last year is moving fine. They need their industrial zoning permission so they can start building. We're hopeful that this will happen towards the end of spring, the, sorry, or the beginning of summer. The incentives package from the country is very significant, but it's only upon completion of certain milestones for construction and sales of the first car units. We've also recently shown another electric vehicle facility in Plovdiv for electric light trucks, most of them exported to the United States. Another fascinating industry that very little has been shown before. Another interesting thing that is about to happen in the northeast of Bulgaria is a very large Bulgarian investment in the food industry or processing of certain oils. Uh, and that makes me personally very happy because we are traditionally after foreign direct investment, but it shows that there are sizable capitals in Bulgaria that can be reinvested in the country if we can prove that the rule of law applies for everyone. Then in the ICT segment, we've had a number of large Ukrainian operators here who have now brought significant part of their works from, from Kiev and Moscow to Bulgaria and they believe they can operate even larger operations in the future from Sofia. We've seen a number of solar plants being announced in the southwest of the country with various potential manufacturers. So all in all, I can see a lining up of various initiatives. Most optimistically, the figures for January show that the foreign direct investment in January 2022 is more than double the foreign direct investment of January 2021. It's early to say that whether this is a trend or a blip in the statistics, but it's something that gives us a positive signal. Another aspect of our work, which is equally important, is the preparation of human capital people that can operate and work in these tech companies that add so much value to the economy. In order to do that, we've identified a certain strategy, which is creating academic institutions in Bulgaria that rather than operating on their own, affiliate with top institutions in their domain around the world so they can produce joint degrees. Probably the best example uh, that will be announced next week is the Artificial Intelligence PhD program between Sofia University and the ETH, Polytechnic University out of Zurich, one of the top institutions in this domain. I'm convinced that producing top-class AI PhDs in Sofia will inevitably attract top-class AI labs of top-class world companies to locate themselves in Sofia because that's where the talent will be. On similar vein, we are having the same approach with the Agriculture University in Plovdiv. They're going to produce affiliate degrees with Wageningen, Agriculture University, probably the best one in Europe based in the Netherlands. We are applying the same logic to the economics university in Varna. They plan to have a tourism university and they will affiliate this tourism university with one of the top hospitality institutions in Europe so that we can get now decent people trained in world-class hospitality out of Varna. And this concept keeps coming. So uh, you will hear more of it. And a few years down the line, we should be able to have here top trained talent to serve companies based here rather than somewhere else. So the first unicorn in Bulgaria was born just a couple of months ago. 
How does this success position Bulgaria in the eyes of international investors? I cannot begin to share the importance of this milestone. It will not be felt immediately. The impact of unicorns will be dramatic when those guys sell their companies. Whether they make a private exit or an IPO, it doesn't matter. What matters is that there will be a tremendous influx of tech capital in this country. And that will change the entire dynamic of the economy. So far, we've had old economy capital moving here, partially inherited by the state, uh, partially inherited by large corporations, but mostly stuck with 20th century industries. The exits of the first Bulgarian unicorns will change that balance. The new capital here will bring societal changes because it will request them. And then our mission of changing Bulgaria will be accelerated through the force of this capital. That's my uh, biggest bet. To tell you where it goes, I spoke to my colleague from Estonia on the latest uh, meeting of ministers. He said, you know what is my only metric in Estonia? The only metric of my ministry in Estonia is how many unicorns Estonia will produce this year. That is all that not me, but the Estonian population wants to know. The grocery store seller and the uh, wheat grower and the IT engineer and the state administrators, they don't care about the price of oil and the price of bread and about the Russian invasion. The only thing they want from me as a metric is how many unicorns this country will produce by the end of the year. So I humbly dream of making the notion of unicorns as popular here as it is in Estonia, uh, because the Estonian seems to have realized the same things. It's these young companies that grow so virally fast that can bring viral changes to their countries in a dramatically positive direction. Thank you for your answer. And uh, to put things in perspective, big tech companies like Tesla, Amazon and Microsoft are choosing Greece to develop their R&D sites. Why not Bulgaria? Are we opting for such projects? And what value can this bring to our ecosystem? Greece is a different market. It's a different geopolitical location. It's a different uh, history. So investors will always look at things in a different way. On the other hand, Greece and Bulgaria are on the way from the Mediterranean to Europe. So in some aspects, we are already seeing a very welcoming approach by Greece government itself to treat Bulgaria and Greece as one unit. So rather than planning our transport separately, we can plan together. How does material and people flow between Greece and Bulgaria more easily, all the way up north and up northwest towards Europe? Rather than planning energy by ourselves, we can plan energy together. Can we import liquefied gas through the Greek terminal? Is there a pipeline to carry it into Bulgaria? Can they buy capacity in our atomic power station? Can we buy capacity in their ports? Uh, all of these things are important to be discussed. And the more we discuss, the more common topics we discover with the Greeks. So we are not the same, but we are complementary. So I believe investors will understand it as well. We have a lot of joint projects between the two countries. But first and foremost, for investors to stick around with us and not only with Greece, we need to convince them that the fundamentals are here. Rule of law and decent infrastructure. Thank you, Minister Lorer. Recently, you met with your Macedonian counterpart. How can we strengthen regional cooperation in the field of innovation between ministers in Southeastern Europe? And are there any particular projects that you're working on in collaboration with other ministries? Actually, the North Macedonia situation is the only one where I feel in reverse roles. Traditionally, Bulgaria has been a place where we want to attract investors. But since we are considerably larger than North Macedonia, for North Macedonia, we are the large investor. 
So when we go to North Macedonia, we feel like Germany coming to Bulgaria. We are the big brother. Uh, it's a fascinating position to be in, and Bulgarian investors are actually quite present in the North Macedonian economy, whether it's in uh, financial services, whether it's in IT, uh, probably in energy very soon, because they are adopting an energy transformation program very similar to ours. And I think that will continue the flow in this direction. The role of governments is, first of all, to remove obstacles. We need to remove the uh, political stone throwing at each other. We need to have a constructive dialogue around economic topics, removing obstacles, allowing transportations, allowing mutual investments, supporting mutual investments. And then it allows for a much smoother political dialogue as well. For example, we agreed with uh, Deputy Prime Minister Bitiki, who is in charge of the economic portfolio, to have a common mechanism for logging complaints of Macedonian companies investing in Bulgaria and Bulgarian companies investing in Macedonia for economic discrimination based on place of origin. In other words, no Bulgarian company should be discriminated by state or local authorities in Macedonia because they are Bulgarians and vice versa. That's an example of policies helping development of the relations between the two countries. And nowadays, in the context of the Russian aggression to Ukraine, the question of Northern Macedonia and Bulgaria, the lifting of the veto and the beginning of the negotiation between Macedonia and the European Union has become vital because the conflict in Ukraine has shown one thing. There's no neutral. If you're not in the European in NATO, you're up for the taking. Uh, therefore, the question of the future for Northern Macedonia has become extremely important. For us, the question of the rights of the Macedonian Bulgarian is equally important. So now the question is, what is the right formula that will allow Bulgaria to lift the veto and welcome the North Macedonia into the negotiating process to the Union? Very insightful, thank you. And how is innovation covered in the updated version of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan? Can you maybe mention some projects that are included? The Innovation and Resilience Plan will be widely focused, at least in our section, on, on two things, industrial zone development and innovation development. The innovation will be focused around green, around energy, about digitalization of government services and companies' infrastructure. Um, there is a certain emphasis on cybersecurity for obvious reasons. We are going to help companies improve their cybersecurity. We are going to help companies improve their technological infrastructure. This summer, we are also going to revive the National Innovation Fund, which sponsors Bulgarian companies to acquire research services from academic institutions so they can improve the intellectual property of their products. And later on, even more interestingly, within the new operative programs of the European Union, we are also going to invest heavily in the other direction. We are going to give money to academic institutions to create spin-offs, the so-called technology transfer process, where smart people in academia with great ideas can create their own startups based on their intellectual property and see what it's worth in the business world. Something that has not been attempted with significant funds here ever before. And I dare say we have a small dream about the first Bulgarian space program, but that uh, I'll keep it for the next interview. Thank you. And lastly, do you plan to initiate any law amendments to improve the framework for the development of innovative businesses in Bulgaria? Again, a note on North Macedonia. Actually, they are catching up with their ease of doing business index. And we should do radical things here because it's a race. And we are being compared constantly to other countries. Now, in order to do that, probably the biggest move for Bulgaria will be creating digital services. Our administration has been notoriously paper-based for some time now. One of the largest chunks, both in the Bulgarian state budget 
and in the European operating programs is a chunk for making government services finally digital. Portals, paperless, internal checks, all of this has to be digital. It will be a lot faster and a lot easier to track and control. One of the biggest complaints of the European prosecution as well, who is now checking all the previous European programs. That's what we are after. Thank you for watching. I'm Elena and we at the Recursive aim to provide a constructive reporting of the developments of the regional ecosystems in Southeast Europe. Don't forget to like us to never miss another great episode of the Recursive Connects and in the meantime, read the stories that shape stories on our website. Thank you.